How's it going, everyone? Joey here, and I am joined by Andres Restart because we're talking Metroid Prime Remastered. It's been about a week since this game just came out of nowhere, shadow dropped on us, quite possibly the worst kept secret in all of Nintendo for the past few years, but there's still quite a bit of surprises that this game gave us. Andres, what, what, where was your mind at when this game was announced? Like, you all saw my reaction where I was just going crazy on the phone with Tom while it all happened. But uh, what, what, what were you thinking? What was going through your head? A couple things. Um, so I, I've always thought this was going to happen, right? I never lo lost faith, but mm -hmm. I didn't think it would happen like this. And I remember someone, like, I was also live streaming the show and someone asked me, Hey, uh, apparently it's going to be a shadow drop. And I was like, no, there's no, no way. That would be disrespectful to Metroid Prime Remastered. That's what I said. I was actually <laughs> saying that I would be upset if they were to shadow drop it. Because I want the game to get, like, its proper, you know, marketing and, and fan service and all that. Like, make sure everyone knows about this game. And then they shadow dropped it. No one came out on stage. There was no, like, build up for it. It was just, like, a really quick thing. And I was just like, What? And then during the actual trailer, like I was trying to contain myself from screaming because one of my roommates is saying, "Hey, stop screaming! I'm working." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh man, but I, but, but I, I need to, to scream." <laughs> yeah, you can't do um, this to me. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was very mixed because I was like upset that they were shadow dropping and they didn't really talk about it too much, but then also it's real and it looks better than I than I thought it would. So ultimately, you I'm could very play happy it right then it, and there. Yeah. You could play it after the direct was over. I did not expect it to happen. It just here. One morning I woke up and they, and like I didn't think I was going to play it later that day and now I'm playing it on hard mode. I did the same thing with Dread. I actually think I played Dread like maybe three times in a row like when it came out. So with same. Prime I'm just trying to do a 100% scan run and a hard mode run. But yeah, that's that's like kind of like the first thing I want to talk about too is the the fact that this is so unprecedented for Nintendo for a number of reasons. For one, it is a shadow drop. They don't normally do those. And they also did uh, they also shadow dropped the Game Boy games and the Game Boy Advance games. If, if anything, I think a lot of us maybe predicted that, at least from what I've heard on Twitter and through uh, through the rest of the Game Explained staff, was that they would shadow drop Advance Wars. If there was any game they were going to shadow drop, it's Advance Wars. Nope, it's coming out in April. Here's Metroid Prime Remastered. Play it right now, digitally at least. Physical's coming February 22nd. That thought you had about Metroid deserving more than a shadow drop also went through my head as well for like a little bit a more i was just more excited to finally play the game we'll have a discourse about stuff later but because right now i need to play metroid but i also thought about just the response to this shadow drop there's two different kinds of ways you can get like the conversation going you could give it the traditional marketing thing where it's like hey here's the game here's a trailer it's coming out in two or three months and they but, did that with dread like they marketed dread more so than pretty much any game during that time period and it worked out Pretty well. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. Best selling, best -selling Metroid, game. Metroid game of all time. Yeah. That's just crazy. I think we all saw that coming. But then there's the other side of things where, like, Nintendo just shadow dropped this game that is just so happens to be one of the best looking Switch games ever. And it's 40 bucks. That's a big deal, too. I think a lot of us, after Skyward Sword HD, after Super Mario Sunshine hit the Switch through the 3D All Stars collection, not an insane visual upgrade from those games. I think that kind of tempered a lot of our expectations for if this Metroid Prime Trilogy HD is real, if this Metroid Prime Remaster is real, it's not going to look as good as it looks in our heads. And then it did. It looked insane. This game looks insane, Andres. I don't I don't yeah, know how the Switch was able to run this game. <laughs> it's it's truly shocking, honestly. Like, you know, like we believe a lot of us believe like the Jeff Grubb rumors, right? And like mm -hmm. he referred to as a big boy remaster. And apparently big boy remaster looks pretty much better than anything on Switch. So yeah, yeah like I, I expected it to look substantially better, but I didn't think we'd be having the conversation that it's straight up like maybe the best looking game on Switch. Because as good as it looks, it's also running at 60 frames per second. Flawlessly, almost. Yeah, I watched I haven't, a digital, I haven't noticed anything. Yeah, I, w I also watched Digital Foundry's tech mm. analysis of it today as of recording this, and they said the same thing. Like, there's, like, no frame rate hitches. Like, if there was, there were very few of them, and they, they weren't that low. And, and that's what I was thinking, too. I was just like, okay, for one, if you shadow drop a game like this, it's probably not that good. So I was concerned about that, too. Like, maybe this isn't that good of a remaster, and it runs flawlessly. It looks really good. There's a few things that are missing from the original release, which we'll talk about in a bit. But yeah. that's also where I want to bring the conversation back to the shadow dropping. Last time I checked, this game is number one on the eShop in North America, which is just wild, too. 
So there is still a value in that shadow dropping, especially after Xbox shadow dropped a game from Tango Gameworks, Hi-Fi Rush, and that game received a ton of a ton of praise too. And it's one of the best games of the year already. So there's still a value in the shadow dropping, and it seems like it's working out in Nintendo's favor. Not only is it number one on the yeah. eShop, at least as last time I checked, it was also number one on Switch games on Amazon. So this is already, we're already seeing a huge amount of success from this shadow drop. So have you, has your opinion changed on that? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it has. Uh, I'll, I'll say that, you know, um, Nintendo knows how to market their games better than I do. So, you know, <laughs> that, that, they study, they have the analytics, they work on that. I just make videos about Nintendo. So there's very, di very different, you know, expertise there. But, um... Although that said, we haven't seen hard sales numbers yet, right? Like, Not yet. I mean, if there's a time that the game's going to be at the top of any charts, it's going to be right when it comes out. So what I'm curious on is how significant are those numbers and will that have some staying power, right? Because at least with Metroid Dread, while last I checked, Nintendo said 2.9, it's been kind of there for a little while I dropped something, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's been around like 2.9 last we heard, right? And Nintendo hasn't really updated it since, so... With Dread, I'm kind of wondering, is it does it have that evergreen status or did it just kind of get like those few months of a lot of hype and afterwards it's kind of been pretty minimal? So with Prime Remastered, I'm kind of wondering, is it going to have that initial hype, maybe sell a million, two million, or will it go be well beyond that and continue to sell? That's a really good question, especially now that they can, they can make it sell for even lower. With the full price of 40 bucks, that's just wild to me. Like, the, yeah. like Nintendo, especially after they increased the price of Tears of the Kingdom to $70, and now they're being super generous with Prime Remastered. Now, I, I started this conversation on Twitter. A lot of people told me, well, Joey, Metroid's not nearly as popular as Mario and Zelda. Of course, they're going to price it lower. I'm reaping the rewards here by being a fan of a not as popular franchise, because yeah. now this with is... $40, bucks, i am buying it twice. One digital, one physical, because you couldn't make me wait physical for that. I'll buy it again, because I'm just that big of a fan. Listen, Metroid Prime Remastered is... I would say the most visually impressive game on Switch. It deserves the $80 price tag. So I am also <laughs> going to double dip. I will be buying a physical version. It deserves that. It's honestly shocking just how high quality this is. There are some little minor gripes I have with it, but overall, like I, I think this is potentially the most impressive remaster ever. Like I, I would say the only other game that I've seen Nintendo redo that I would kind of hold in as high of regard would maybe Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition because mm -hmm. that one you could see more like how close it was to the, the initial Wii version because they didn't enhance as much or rebuild as much, but they also gave it a lot of new content with Future Connected and stuff, which was extremely impressive. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, that said, I mean, Primary Master is just, it's just kind of crazy and it being $40, you know, uh, I wonder if, you know, Nintendo is just being experimental with this, right? Like, so, you know, we, we're getting this $40 shadow drop and if it goes well, maybe we'll see more crazy shadow drives like this in the future, at least maybe with some of the remasters. And I wonder if also a part of this is because, because Jeff Grubb also said, like, we know he got his release date super wrong here, saying it was a big holiday title. I mean, Valentine's Day is a holiday, so maybe. <laughs> but, you know, he mentioned they're also planning to release Prime 2 and 3, although not nearly as remastered as Prime 1. Uh, Prime 1 was basically like the experiment, per se, of what they could pull, do with a Nintendo Switch. How good Metroid Prime 4 is probably going to look. Oh man, now I have more faith. Prime 4 is just going to look even more stunning. Yeah. Like, I was really just dogging on the Switch lately, because like, I didn't think the visuals on those games looked that good, and then Prime Remastered came out and proved me wrong. So it does make me wonder, are they going to release Prime 2 and 3 separately at maybe lower prices? Maybe... $30 each instead, and then maybe, who knows, they'll get more generous and release them all in a collection for 60 or 70 Who knows? I wonder if that has to do with it. Uh, do you still think Prime 2 and 3 are coming in, like, a less remastered sort of way? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the initial rumor, right? If the initial rumor has pr has proven true so far, why should we doubt the other part, right? True. Like, so, and the other part includes that 2 and 3 are coming at some point. Now, there isn't as much information on those, and you know I feel like there is maybe some room for interpretation. Now, I don't want to set myself up for, for disappointment and expect that they're also going to get the same treatment. Mm -hmm. I, that It seems... It might be too good to be true, but I'm not going to completely outrule it either, but I'm not going to expect it because I don't want that disappointment, right? Especially right. if the rumor doesn't say that. That said, I, I, I've seen a lot of people kind of like talking about that, like, oh man, they've remastered one, they should do the same for two and three. So even if I don't think that's going to happen, 
fact of the matter is there are people who do because they saw that, right? So when Nintendo does, if they do bring back two and three, I think they're going to be maybe want to be a little bit calculated in terms of how they sort of present these games. And, you know, something that I think is also interesting that I'm, I'm sure you also thought of is like, well, OK, they show off Prime Remastered, but they didn't talk about Prime 4 at all. Right. So kind of makes me wonder, maybe if they do give us two and three, they are shadow dropped. Um, they do get somewhat of a remastered treatment. Maybe they're not called remastered. Maybe they're just called like HD. Like, look, they're kind of more like a Skyward Sword HD sort of situation. I, I don't know about a double pack. I know some people really want that. But like how often does Nintendo put two like really big 15, 20 plus hour experiences in one package? Right. Excluding 3D All-Stars. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I definitely think they need to be cheaper. And when Nintendo does announce them, I feel like if they're not getting the same treatment as Remastered, maybe they kind of like announce, hey, we're going to be releasing these games on the eShop same day or they're coming really soon around the time they blow the lid off Metroid Prime 4. Mm hmm. Just to kind of like, oh, these aren't getting the remaster treatment, but if they show off Prime 4, well, okay, well, Prime 4 looks amazing, so we'll still play 2 and 3 to get the story. They're still enhanced, they're pretty cheap, and Prime 4 is on the way. So I feel like that's kind of how they might handle it. I think so, too, something like that, because to, you know, entice those people, right? And yeah. I feel like they got to be on the way, otherwise I feel like they would have cut out the ending of Prime 1, where if you get 100% completion on the items, you'll unlock a post credit scene which hints at Dark Samus coming into Prime 2 and Prime yeah. 3. I feel like they would have cut that if they didn't have that plan, if they didn't have Prime 2 and 3 planned for Switch. Yeah. So. I might give you a little pushback on that, actually, because I, I, I did see that, right? I saw that, yeah. and I see where you're coming from, and, it, and maybe you're right. But also, it is supposed to be like a remaster, right? So mm -hmm. maybe they want to just kind of be like really true to the game, and the game does include that. So, you know, if you don't include it, then it's no longer a very true remaster, right? True. That said, you know, um, I do feel like maybe Prime Remaster could be hinting at things to come. I mean, they redid Ridley's design. They had to redo Samus's face because it, you could argue maybe it's a tease, but it's... They had to redo it regardless. Right. And, um, and yeah. I feel like it is interesting they didn't just go with the character model that we're, we've been used to uh, for the past, like, 10, 15 years. Because, like, her, her, the model they used in Prime 1, like, original, was, was like, a more, touch more realistic for what they could achieve on GameCube, at least. But then, like, every Samus model afterward was just like, oh, here she is, like, kind of animated anime, kind of looking, yeah. Yeah. looking Samus. But here she looks, like, different again more realistic yeah. per se so i don't know why they would change that otherwise if they didn't plan on using that model for prime yeah. 4. which one do you prefer i really i don't know if it's recency bias but i really like that new model <laughs> like that i new really model like the new really model good. yeah and I, I saw the video you guys posted and i didn't know about the blinking thing from the old version <laughs> that that ruins it for me so i'm glad they fixed that my yes. goodness my goodness like yeah but i i do i think i also prefer this version of samus like she looks good. I, I think, yeah, looking back on the more, like, toonish, animatish sort of look, it it, it, it doesn't hold up. Not really. No. Nah. It, it's pretty basic, too. You think about it, it's like, oh, blonde hair, blue eyes, ponytail? Okay. Like, nothing really stands out, you know? Like, yeah. she just looks fairly basic. Here it looks yeah. like a, a real person. I wonder if they had a facial reference. Like, that'd be cool. Like, she like a real person. She looks like a real person. Yes. Like, she kind of does. Like, I can't put my finger on it, but she kind of does. And maybe it's kind of like an, an amalgamation of a few different people. Like, maybe, you know, they were looking at designs of a few, like, prominent actors, and they mm -hmm. kind of just combined some ideas there, but it's not I see a touch of Elizabeth Olsen in there. I don't know about you. Kind of saw that. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, damn, what if what if they did get her to play Samus in Prime 4? But that's just a whole other top video topic. Oh. Oh, Let's man. talk about the quality of this remaster, which is so good. And, you know, we have, we've had that conversation of just like, hey, is this even a remaster? Remaster is selling it short. I feel like we haven't seen a good remaster in a while. Because that, that's, what, that's what it makes me think. Because visually, yes, it looks remade. But it's still a remaster in the sense that... The models are animated the same. I feel like they changed some of Samus's animations in some cutscenes, but that's about it. The controls, for the most part, like, they feel... I wouldn't say, like, they... Because obviously they changed a lot. Like, now you have dual stick controls. 
but it still plays like Metroid. Like Samus still moves like at the same yeah. speed. It still feels like Metroid Prime. In that sense, it's still a remaster, but it's still really good. And you know, we've been used to this these past few years see like full-blown remakes from Resident Evil, from just recently Dead Space. I feel like the term remaster has become like a bit lost. I don't remember anything being really remastered per se since like the PS4 era or the beginning of the PS4 era. So to see that this is using the term remastered, but it looks like a remake, I feel like it just goes to show we haven't seen a good remaster in a long time. What do you think? Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts. I mean, one, I think there's a lot of confusion and debate in terms of like, what is a remaster? What is a remake, a reboot, a reimagining, a definitive edition? And I feel that maybe this term is kind of used loosely across the board amongst fans and even like game developers and the marketing team. But I'll tell you, to your point about Metroid Prime feeling like Metroid Prime, I did see discussion that it's running on the same code. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the same at, at its root, which we can't see optically, right? But at its root from like a, a coding perspective, which I'm not going to act like I understand fully, but it is still in essence the initial Metroid Prime just greatly enhanced and reworked visually. And I'll say that, yeah, it, it I think that actually kind of benefits it, which is interesting, right? Like, I, I think by being a remaster, maybe it would have been better than a full-on remake. Because they're still using that code, it feels like Metroid Prime. Oh, and yeah. you and I have played Metroid Prime for years, like, so we kind of know it almost like the back of our hand. Even with those and, new controls, yeah. the dual stick controls, yeah. which I prefer now, it still Me feels too. like Metroid Prime. It absolutely does. Like, it, it just feels smooth and... I have even noticed, and I kind of want to take a closer look at this, like, I know the speedrunning community may already be figuring things out, but, like, for example, I know, I want to find out if, like, you can still get the space jump boots really early on like you used to. I haven't confirmed that yet, but there is, like, um, the, you know, like, the little trick where you can shoot missiles really qu quickly with the power beam? Right, yeah. So you can still do that. Nice. And I think that's kind of an example of, hey, this is still based off the initial Metroid Prime, uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. So I would say that at least in terms of how nintendo is marketing things when they see remastered that means more than a definitive edition i would mm -hmm. say i think it means that this is like yeah we, we took the base game but we enhanced it as much as possible so then when prime 2 and 3 come come down the road they may not have the remastered moniker they may go with just like an hd which would make sense if, it, if it's basically just like an upscale with some quality of life changes and reworked controls like like skyward sword hd so that's kind of how I'm thinking they're sort of positioning it, but I do think that the way they've done it is really good. Because if they had remade it, it wouldn't have felt the same. No. Like, if they started from scratch, it, would, it wouldn't have felt the same. Um, and I think it... I'm not saying I don't have faith in Retro Studios, because I think they've shown they've done a great job. But, you know, I, I, I think uh, they made the right decision in, in sticking with the, with the base code and just building from there. And I think it's... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the best-looking game on Switch, and I, it's maybe one of the best games you can play on Switch even now. Yeah, and and the, if that if they're using the same engine they've been using for like 20 years and it's been seriously modified, that just goes to show like they can't ever stray away from that engine. Like wow, they got something really special on their hands if they can make a game that looks that good on a system that's using a Tegra X1 processor from 2015. What? <laughs> it's crazy. It is yeah, absolutely I mean nuts and it's only 900p. A docked it looks like 1080p. What? <laughs> Even in handheld mode, which is like 612, right? Like yeah. I, I played in handheld mode just to see. It still looks great. And, you know, I feel like, I don't know, um, but I know that like, for example, like with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, um, Nintendo and Monolith Soft were using like some better ways of sort of presenting the image quality. And even though, and, and you compare Xenoblade 3 to like Xenoblade 2, and there's a clear difference in just how sharp and smooth it looks. And... I don't know if they're using the same technology with with Prime Remastered, but you know it is all Nintendo, so maybe. But it looks really, really, really clean, really, really crisp. Uh, I'm I'm surprised. I, mm -hmm. I'm visually, I'm always surprised about the game. I, I do want to bring this up to you. I don't know if you want to say this for later or not, but not nah, bring it up now. Let's do it. The arm cannon lighting. If there, I have literally no gripes about the game. Like the mm -hmm. controls are just are customizable. At first, when it came to like switching around beam weapons, I had to play around with some of the options, but I think it's okay. I Overall, I think dual analog with gyro actually, I think, feels the best, at least for me personally. Right. I think they optimize that well. But there's the one issue I have is the lighting with the arm cannon. It's not just 
like, hey, it, it's just a visual. It's more than a visual thing. Well, yes, it does look cool, but also there's a few moments in the game that get really dark intentionally. Like mm -hmm. it blackens out, like you can barely see anything. And I used to use the arm cannon attacks to actually kind of find my way around a little bit. And that's no longer a thing now. So now I kind of have to use a thermal and x-ray visor mm -hmm. a little bit more. Which you could argue might might have been a, de a design decision, right? Because like, hey, look, these need to be more important. But it is something that I have been somewhat annoyed with. Yeah, it's it's a bummer for me too. I, I don't really feel like it's a bummer in the sense that, oh, now the dark areas like are just going to be dark without the thermal visor. Because I really feel like the game in general is way brighter on Remastered. Except for the Space Pirate base, which goes black because you need the thermal visor. That's right. like the only part to me that really looks like super dark. But other than that, the game's been better lit across the board, which some might think detracts from it because like now the game is just brighter in general. But I still think it looks really freaking good. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I think that with the whole brightness thing, I mean, I, I totally agree with you, you know, like the in Fendrun and when it goes dark in the Space Pirate base and also I think a part in um, Phase on Mines, it goes dark. But otherwise, the game is brighter and it's easier to see everything. And to your point, like, I, I think it looks great, but some people are, are maybe suggesting that it, it kind of takes away from maybe the atmosphere. I, I strong disagree because mm -hmm. I still have had those moments of fear. I still have had those moments of being a little uncomfortable about the darkness, the eeriness. And I think the lighting is just kind of maybe better contrast. For example, the beginning part of the game, um, the space frigate, like I, I did a little comparison looking at that compared to the original Metroid Prime, and yes, um, the dark areas are darker in Prime Remaster, but the, li the lighter areas are lighter, and it just kind of looks more natural to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know, I think they actually balanced it really well. I still feel like it, it's, it's creepy and eerie. I could see everything clearly, and it's just really visually pleasing. I agree wholeheartedly. This game still looks like, in spite of its complete and utter visual overhaul, it still looks like Metroid Prime. And you know, to keep repeating that phrase, this looked as good as it looked in my head when I played it in 2002 or whenever I actually played it in like 2007. Like I was a bit late to the party there, but it it just looks like in the end, it still just looked like Metroid Prime to me. Like when I was in like my seventh hour of playing, I just thought, okay, I'm still playing Metroid Prime. And that's a good thing because now like, now like other people who've never played these games can look at it with newer eyes and even feel the same way we felt just like, wow, this is a GameCube game and it looks like, this is the best looking game I've ever seen, and now it's just like, this is the best looking game I've ever seen on Switch. And I know people will debate with me on what game is best looking on Switch, because, you know, art is subjective, especially because it's like, Absolutely. there's people who don't really like the realistic art style, and that's totally fine. Like, a lot of people have told me Luigi's Mansion 3 actually looks better, and I'm like, it does look really good, but I'm a Metroid fan, I got bias going yeah. for me, so. <laughs> I mean, if I were to put a top five, those both would be in there. Yep. And I would probably still put Breath of the Wild as well. And Breath of the Wild, like, if you just look at it, like, per inch, Prime Remastered, like, within the smaller space looks better. Yeah. But when you take into account that Breath of the Wild is open world and there's a lot of physics systems in place, like, it's very impressive. So if we're just talking about, like, overall, like, technical, like, achievement, maybe Prime Remastered isn't, like, number one. But it is definitely at least in that conversation. I'm not saying it isn't number one. It might still be. Mm -hmm. But there's a conversation to be had with Luigi's Mansion, Breath of the Wild. Monster Hunter Rise is pretty good. Oh, Astral yeah. Chain. Forgotten Land. I think that one Stunning. should be talked about too. And Mario Odyssey as well. Because 60 FPS game with large areas. Like that's pretty good. Yeah. Lots of good looking games on Switch. And I thought we were kind of done with that when 2022 even started. I was like, yeah, Kirby looks great, but I don't think we're ever going to see a Switch game that really wows us like, like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey did again. Boy, was I wrong, because Prime Remastered, yeah. wow. You're telling me Nintendo just shadow dropped one of the best looking games on Switch. That's just crazy to me. And $40. $40 too. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely nuts. And I am kind of disappointed that they didn't do something to add more quality of life improvements to it. And now, of course, when you're doing a remake, you could add a ton more stuff in there. Like, I know mm. a lot of people talk about how The Last of Us Part 1 doesn't look or feel like a remake. It's just like a fancier remaster. That still made that added a lot of accessibility options. It changed a lot of the controls, even though they're like subtle. It changed some of the way the AI behaves. So that made itself a remake on its own remastered they changed some things a little bit but not too much like now the power beam shoots three at a time before going into charge mode which hot take i like because i don't like 
I don't like doing this all the time. Yeah. I like just, okay, like three, 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 and then it's good. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm rapid fire shooting. And I feel like some of the enemies are stronger, like the, the baby she-goths. I think they they take a lot more hits to go down than they did in the original, which is doesn't really feel like a quality of life feature, but it's there. <laughs> I I don't know. If it, it, yeah, it, this is one of those things that I'm, I'm not sure about either. I I use the missile trick on the Shigoth, so I haven't had too much problems with them. Mm -hmm. But this the 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 Chozo ghosts for whatever reason I found that they're always right behind me. <sighs> like I'm moving yeah. around, turning around constantly, trying to avoid them. Yeah, they always appear right behind me and hit me. They feel harder. It could just be because I'm playing the game differently now and I'm using a different strategy. Or maybe it's because I didn't want to get the x-ray visor, so I wait till the very last minute to get that. So I've been just buying them blind, basically. But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few little things that feel a little different. I do agree with you with the beam weapons, with being able to shoot the, the rapid fire. Um, I actually like that as well. It, it, do, it is different, though, because it's hard. It's not impossible. But sometimes you may not want to like start shooting me. You may want to just like hold the charge and be ready. Mm -hmm. So like there's like, you know, in the water, I forget the name of the enemy, but it's like it like opens up and you can like shoot. It's like energy thing and it breaks up. It looks like a little shark thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like that, like you, you kind of if you hit it, it'll like not open up. So you, you want to like be ready to like just kind of like break it apart. But, you know, you just change your gameplay style a little bit. You maybe you shoot away from it and then you charge and then you. You, you blast it open but overall i think like that quick succession of shooting it does make it a little bit easier because yeah like pressing a repeatedly especially for boss fights with big life bars gets kind of frustrating and i actually have enjoyed press using the trigger to, to shoot a lot too which is, is pretty nice yeah, there is something really else it makes noticed. strafing easier yeah. using the trigger yes. instead of a button although it yeah. does make also some things a little more tricky Super missiles, it's mm. super awkward because now I have right. to switch to A to charge up my gun and then press the R button. Or I do like this weird thing where I, <laughs> I start you claw the, the claw. claw. Yeah. That's very strange. That's why I hope yeah. like, as much as I love the new controls uh, of the dual stick controls, not a huge fan of the other control options. I just love dual stick. Um, I hope maybe they find a way in Metroid Prime 4 to remedy those types of deals. I also don't like the having to choose like, um, I also don't like the either switching beams initially. You can also change it to where it's like if you hold X, you can change visors or hold X yeah. to change beams. Not a fan of that either. I think they could have done something more streamlined. But, you know, I I'm think the holding the right stick and then changing the direction to kind of mimic how they did it on the Wii. Yeah, might have been better. I um, agree. I, I, I did change that that beam swapping option because I think at first it was X and it changed yeah. to R. Oh, you can um, do that. Change it, you can change it to I R. Because I accidentally hit R a lot because I just played Breath of the Wild recently. Yeah. And like, that's how you did it there. Yeah. And the, and the missile shots became X, which actually felt pretty good because it's kind of like GameCube where you had the A and the X button and you can kind of do the, the, the button combinations that way. I kind of wish they would have just given us straight up button mapping instead of giving us options between button maps, you know? Yeah. And also makes no, me... You can't click the sticks at all. There's no stick clicking There's options no stick clicking. at all. Like, yeah. uh, like a, a part of me hopes that's because in Prime 4, they're going to add a sprint button. I don't know. <laughs> or a melee attack. Or a melee attack. Don't even get me started. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do anything to, like, streamline the experience in Prime 4. Because I know Prime 3 is just, like, you couldn't even swap beams. Because, like, they just they just kept do, getting changed. Do you want that? Do you want be swappable beams to come back? I don't. It depends on what they're doing. Um, like, because if... Because if the if the game just lets you change, if the game just keeps um, doing what they did in Prime Three, where each beam iterates on itself, so it's it'll still serve like the same function like in the past beams. I'm okay with that. Um, but if if beams are solvable in the next one, I hope it's more streamlined than what we got here, where you hold this and then you swap it. Because I kept forgetting which buttons to press. Like, I'm in the yeah. middle of a firefight and I'm like, uh, uh, which one is it? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tricky, like, for me, because you have to press the D-pad to change your beam weapons and your visors. Yeah. In order to do that, most people can't use the, the left control stick while also pressing the D-pad, unless yep. you, like, start clawing the controller, which is not <laughs> a natural way to do it. Which is why, you know, I suggested maybe if you click the right stick and that way you can just, you know, where you're aiming, you can change it that way. So it is it is different. One thing I started doing is that when I'm jumping, when I'm coming down, I already have the momentum established. That's when I take that quick moment to change beams while I'm in the air. Mm, but nice. I feel like 
for most people, it should be a little easier. <laughs> yeah. So definitely agree there. Something else I wanted to bring up that was something I kind of wish they changed is the map. And I, actually, I don't think the map is bad. Like, you know, playing it now, I'm like seeing it clearly. I think it's great. And actually now because the game's in HD, like whenever you scan something or the imagery, it looks a lot sharper. You can make things out more clearly. So I think it works out really well. But it would have been nice if they had like markers to place like, oh, okay, a point of interest. Let me come back to that. That would have been nice. It would have been a simple little thing. I think it go kind of goes to your point that because it's more of a remaster than a remake, they didn't go back and make like significant gameplay changes like that because that definitely would have helped a lot. Oh, seriously, you don't know how many times because because I've uh, as much as I've played the original Metroid Prime, I've only ever I think I only 100%ed it once. So when I was mm. trying to 100% it on the Switch version, um, I didn't know where a lot of the stuff was. So I was just thinking, oh man, a pin system would be really good right now because I need to remember there was a time where I met, there was two pickups in like one area and I only got one yeah. of them. And then when I found another one was back there, it was like, oh, now I got to walk all the way back there. Backtracking in this game is such a pain. And I know a Do lot of people- you want fast travel? Um, something like it. Like I think mm. what Dread did and what- um, what Samus Returns did with the teleport stations was a nice way to go about things. Or just, like, and I, and I know you can't change level design in a remaster, right? But I hope, like, Prime 4, the the level design is incorporates shortcuts better. Because I think that's what ultimately annoys me about Prime's uh, level design is that it's just not made suited well for backtracking. And I know a lot of people tell me, but backtracking yeah. is the point of Metroid. Yes, but Prime 2 and 3 did it better. <laughs> So I, I think one way they could have done it, because I actually like playing through the game now, I see now that they like designed a lot of elements and changes for you to come back, like different enemies break out. And like there's little changes to the environment when you come back. So they, they did kind of design it with that in mind. Yeah. But to your point, maybe something they could have done somewhat like Dread, every elevator room, what if they were all interconnected? What if they just add like a little like telecoms like, oh, okay, you can teleport to this other elevator room mm -hmm. because if you did it like that, you have to go come from an elevator room regardless. So all the design changes they had in mind would still work. Now, granted, we don't expect them to change it now, but you know, maybe with the future game, like it could still have backtracking, but maybe every elevator room can connect to any other elevator room. And they're basically like, you know, little portals or fast travel points to just where those other elevator rooms are. Yeah. I was just playing Dead Space remake, which is a fantastic remake. And there was no backtracking in the original game, but they r completely redesigned the ship to make to mm. make it uh, that way. And the way they did that also was by using the tram stations where you go back and forth between areas. Really interesting stuff they did there. And I'm sure Prime for Prime 4, they're keeping something like that in mind to make backtracking more more streamlined, per se. There's just needs to be a lot more streamlining in, these, in, yeah. in Prime 4, I think. And what if this was their way of like, getting the new team uh because they had a, retro studios had a lot of new hires this past these past few years if this is their way to get them familiar with how a prime game works i didn't think i could be more excited for prime 4 than i already was but after seeing what they've done with this remaster it's like retro studio said hey remember how great we were we're still that good don't call it a comeback yeah. i've been here for years <laughs> they just made the best nintendo remaster like maybe ever like so yeah i i think it, this should restore confidence in, in people's faith in retro studios and it's nice to actually get something that's sort of new from retro studios because like the only new thing we've gotten from retro studios since 2014 was the inclusion of funky kong in the like basic straight port of tropical freeze on the <laughs> yes. switch like yeah so it, it, it's nice that we we're seeing something from retro and that we know that they they can still bring the magic yeah seriously with help from iron galaxy studios who mm. they did they did the ports of uh crash 4 um i no not crash 4 insane trilogy uh overwatch 2 the, those kind of games um i think even skyrim if i recall so they got some help from them and that's what brings me to a theory i have i mm. think that prime 2 and 3 are coming to switch but they're mostly being worked on by Iron Galaxy, so Retro Studios can work on Prime 4. So I'm glad you agree with me there, because I think that's yeah. a very solid prediction. Because, <laughs> like, they, they, they need to work on Prime 4 exactly. Like, you know, they have to do that. With that said, you know, I don't... This might give people hope, well, maybe Iron Galaxy is using that new remaster engine and building up 2 and 3, but... I think that's, again, setting ourselves up for disappointment. <laughs> if it happens, amazing. But I think, you know, two and three, uh, keep in mind, two and three are just a little bit more modern than one. 
Absolutely. So you know, they will hold up just a little bit better if they just clean up the textures, you know, clean up a, a few little things. Um, and with those quality of life improvements, I think they're, they're still going to be pretty good. I mean, even Metroid Prime, the original, holds up pretty well. So yeah. if they had just done kind of more like a Skyward Sword HD for Metroid Prime, you and I probably would still be having a lot of this discussion, being super excited about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too concerned, but I do agree with you that I, I think having Iron Galaxy step in, I think that kind of shows, okay, all right, so we have a better, they, they, they may use some elements of what they did with that remaster with two and three, but I'm definitely not expecting as much, but it makes sense for them to do it. To me, as long as it has those different control options, I'll be very happy. I don't know what yeah. they are, they would do with Prime 3, because I remember an ex-Retro Studios developer saying, there's no way you can bring Prime 3 to Switch, but I'm like, but there's a will, there's a way. I am kind of worried yeah. though, because I didn't really like the gyro controls on the Prime remaster. I felt like they just get, got out of sync too much, and and yeah, you can recalibrate it easily, like just by pressing R, but I don't yeah. want to have to keep pressing that button. So I still feel like yeah. dual stick could work for the most part with Prime 3, but that's just my I mean, opinion. maybe they could just map the motion controls to the right stick, kind of like what they did with Skyward Sword. Yeah. I mean, it's just a couple of mini games. Oh, you got to rotate the handled thing. Okay, rotate your stick. There exactly. you go. Big it's deal. Really, they, they, or, and, yeah, because Skyward yeah. Sword had like way more intense motion controls than Prime 3 did. Prime 3 was just mainly pointer controls and that's it yeah so i, I think it, it it could definitely be reworked it wouldn't be as interesting i guess right like it would take away some value from that from the motion stuff because i think when we played prime 3 part of the allure was like oh man i'm like actually controlling like samus's arm as i'm like moving this stuff around but i think now that novelty is sort of worn off for most mm -hmm. people so i think just getting the game letting us play it i think that'll be fine enough prime 3 is still a good game so I'm not too worried about it. Still a gorgeous game too. That yeah. game looks stunning. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> yeah, Prime Three actually will, will look the best. You know, with more of a simple sort of like upscale. Um, Prime Two might be the one because it's you know still running on GameCube. It's. Mm -hmm. I still think it'll look good. I'm not. I'm not really oh, yeah. that concerned about it. All Metroid Prime yeah. games look good except Prime Hunters. But thank you so much, Andres Restart, for joining me on this. I didn't know your last name was Restart. That's crazy. That's not just a user is name. It? <laughs> it is. Fun fact. You didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was my real last name. That is. Uh, but tell, oh, let us know okay. where we can find you. Yeah. So um, my YouTube channel is Andres Restart, and if you search that up on YouTube or Google, you'll probably find me there. I make Nintendo videos, and I'm also on Twitter as well, where I just kind of talk more about the Nintendo stuff, like Zelda, Metroid, and all that other fun stuff. All that fun stuff. All right. Thank you yeah. all so much for watching. Let us know what your thoughts are of the Metroid Prime Remastered in the comments below, and tell us, do you think we're going to get Prime 2 and 3? Maybe sometime soon? Let us know. Until next time, bye-bye.